Eli with Evolve Technology, and in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Panasonic's new Media Production Suites, or MPS. This is their new PTZ control software that brings all of their disparaging tools together into one package. Release this onto the website. So if you Google over to the Panasonic Pro AV site, you'll find the Media Production Suite, which is a free download. And the download version that we'll be working with is version 1.4.43. So go ahead and give it a download. We're going to install this together. So the interesting thing about the MPS is that it's a server application. So during this installation procedure, it's going to install a server and then some shortcuts for a GUI. So once it's up and running, you'll do everything from a web browser. And the cool thing about that is other users on the network can IP into your computer directly. And from their web browser, they can also control the MPS. All right, we're all finished. do some organization. All right, I'm going to launch the MPS. And what you'll notice in my taskbar, I now have the Media Production Suite icon running. There's no functions, right, that could be done with this. Everything is performed through the web GUI. The first time you log in, it's going to ask you to create a login. I would recommend something you're gonna remember. What I'm gonna set it to is to be the same as the PTZ cameras themselves. So admin with password one, two, three, four, five. And here we are. Here is the GUI of the media production suite. A quick little rundown of our navigation. We have device view for all of the connected devices. PTZ control. This is the same PTZ control you've probably used previously. It's just bundled into MPS now. And this is where we're going to control all of our PTZ cameras. There's a help section that will jump you right to their web documentation. In the information section, this is where you can activate and download the different plugins. And as you can see, we have the visual presets, two different auto tracking softwares, and the video maker. And if we tab over to hardware, it's going to show us what GPU or SDI card we have installed on this local computer. In our settings tab, we can create different users and assign them different roles. So we're logged in as an administrator. We could create a super user or a regular user, and they have different permissions, such as they can't create presets, only recall them, and so forth. We can import and export all the setting data for the server. For the auto tracking, we have our face database. So we can add images of the faces we want to track. And then once again, you can see all the different GPUs in our server cluster if we're doing a multi-computer system. Then up in device view, what this does is give you some fields that can be added or taken away from the different areas of the GUI. So let's jump up to device view and go into easy IP. And this is a reskinning of the Easy IP tool you might be familiar with, but bundled into NPS. So I'm going to search the network to see what cameras we can find. Under the network adapter, we can choose specifically which adapter we want to search from. The power of the Easy IP really comes into the fact that you don't have to be on the same subnets, right? Or the same IP scheme as the cameras. For example, your camera could be 10.10.10.1 and your laptop could be on 192.168.1.5. And the easy IP can still find that PTZ. And then you can still remotely reach out and change the IP address of that PTZ camera. So a very powerful tool for finding all the cameras and then IPing them. It works even if the PTZs are all on the exact same IP because the software can differentiate them by their MAC address. 
So we've got two cameras here. Once I select a camera, I can identify them. I can jump right to their web GUI and I can adjust their network settings. If I click this, it's not going to allow me to. There is a built-in security protocol into all the Panasonic PTZs that once they've been on for 20 minutes or longer, you can no longer change the IP address from third-party softwares or remote applications. So if you need to change those IPs, do a power cycle on the cameras, then you'll be able to do it. Now, if we jump into the web GUI directly into the camera and we authenticate as an admin into the camera itself, we can still change the network IP. The disadvantage to this, of course, is that doing it this way, our local computer has to be on the same subnet and IP scheme as the PTZ. So across the top, we have our search function. Auto IP, if we found with the search function, say four or five PTZs, we can select them all, assign an IP range, and tell it to go ahead and set up. It'll reach out and cascade those IPs down those PTZ cameras. We can register as an administrator for these cameras. We can check for firmware updates and apply those firmware updates as well remotely. Here we can see the UE160 is in need of a minor update. And then last, we can activate licenses specific to the camera, such as NDI and MOIP. So now that we've found and configured our two PTZs, let's jump over to our view page and add them as devices. I'm going to grab both of them. I'm going to batch authenticate with admin password 12345. It's going to apply it to all the cameras and OK. And here we are, our two PTZs. Right away, we get our thumbnails. You can see what the cameras see. They have a power status, a name, the type. There are other devices that are available, such as your wireless mic systems and future functions that'll be coming down the pipeline as well. The IP address, the port MAC address. And if we edit these, we can assign them to a group. We can change their name and give their presets a color. Over here on the right, there's some power on and power off preset operations. For example, if we want to power on and have it always go to a specific preset, such as one, and before standby, we want it to do nothing, maintain whatever look you are doing. More of an integration setting, but this could be useful for rental and staging. We can jump right to the control page from here, right to the web GUI, set the camera onto standby or delete it from this interface. Up here, we have group settings for all of the cameras that are currently in group one. Power on, standby, record, start, all and stop, and edit group. So if we had another group or created a second group, we could move these cameras around inside those groups. For example, inside our GS could be group one, and group two could be breakouts, and we can move our cameras around and make sure they're in the right groups, easily assignable. All right, so we've found our cameras, we've IP'd them, now we've set them up inside the software. So let's go to PTZ control. All right, on this page, we have our display devices on the left, our different cameras. We have three different settings for control, single camera, which will give us the largest interface with the most detail. Here is a preview of the camera. This is a low frame rate, but very usable preview. So you can run a show from this interface. We have our presets for setting and deleting presets, changing how quick those presets are gonna move when they pan and tilt. We can also turn on a two-step operation so that we have to click the preset and then recall it with a two-step function versus just clicking it to apply. On the right, we have our virtual joystick, speed for our pan and tilt, zooming in and zooming out, focus, our image adjust, iris, gain, white balance, shutter, and the ND filter. 
Now these could change based on the camera because different cameras have different functionality. For example, if I jump down to the UE80, it doesn't have gain or shutter functions, but it does have auto tracking. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So back up to camera one. All right, so let's go ahead and create a preset. One of the really cool new features is using the preview display window, I can highlight an area and the camera will zoom in to fill that box. There we go. And I'll zoom it a bit tighter. Slow this down. Maybe too slow. And we're going to set this as preset one. We're also going to give ourselves preset two. And we'll do the same for our other camera. Zoom in for our nice tight panel shot. Set this as one and set up shot two. Excellent. Now jumping between presets is as easy as clicking. And notice on camera one, our presets are highlighted green because that's what we set our preset color to be back in our configuration. So we have a multi-camera view as well, which out of all of our display devices, lets us pick and choose specifically different cameras to view on our screen at once. This allows us to compare shots or in the example of having multiple breakouts that might start staggered, I could have a view that only shows me the rooms that are about to start coming up. You have a little pop out that's small, but you can still do PTZ control and do preset recall from here. As well as enable your auto tracking. And finally, we have group control. And this isn't necessarily controlling your different groups. What this is going to allow you to do is select any number of cameras and then fire a preset that they will all move to. So if you notice, as I click preset one or two, both cameras move to that position. I could also zoom out and both cameras will zoom out. This is great for once you have everything programmed, you could toggle different groups or sets of cameras to recall those presets simultaneously. All right, so single camera, multi-camera group control. We have our preset tab at the top. For a single camera, we can see all 100 presets that are available to us and jump between them. We can also look at multiple cameras and then quickly toggle all of those camera presets, any different numbers of them. Now the group page that we performed on just a few moments ago, that's the only page currently where you can recall multiple presets simultaneously from the software. So that covers most of the overview. One extra tool that we have available to us is the auto tracking because we have a UE80, which has the built-in auto tracking function. So let's demonstrate that quickly. So if I zoom out, I've got a rotating figurine on a pedestal. I'm gonna highlight it so the camera gets a little tighter. I'm gonna go ahead and set this as a preset and I'm going to activate auto tracking. And as you'll see, it's going to frame the figurine and then both pan and tilts have a nice smooth tracking. I can zoom in a little tighter and you can see the motion a little bit more. It's doing a very good job given that we have minimal contrast between our figure and the blue wall behind it. And it's also not necessarily 
a real humanoid looking shape, given the fact that it's just a clay figure and doesn't have a skin tone or the contrast that clothing would provide. Yet still doing an admirable job of tracking it here in this scene. A couple quick settings. We can jump to a full body look and the camera will zoom out dynamically while tracking until it can frame the full figurine in the shots. Then I can go back to an upper body where it will zoom in and frame the upper body, sort of the bust shot. I can set a limitation for the pan or tilt. So if I press this, it is now limited how far the camera can pan to the right. And if it loses tracking long enough, it's gonna try to zoom or pan to a home position or a designated preset. So once again, I'll let it grab tracking, but it can't pan past this. There we are. Now you'll see some other settings such as face recognition and more detailed settings, but these aren't going to be activated per se for the UE80 or also the UE30, 40, or 50 because those also have built-in tracking. But this isn't the full-featured plugin. This is what's built into those cameras, and it works very well, but it's nowhere near as robust and powerful as the full licensed plugin, which also lets you do the UE150s, the 60s, the AWs, and a bunch of other PTZs all simultaneously. Well, that does it for the MPS overview. It's a new software. It's very powerful. I'd recommend giving that free download a grab. Check it out and use it on your next show to get comfortable with it. If you have any questions or want to know more, go ahead and reach out to Evolve. Thanks for watching.